Tune in to JMM Radio every Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. Only here on Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. Welcome to the Rundown, where we take you right into the action with the latest sports news, updates, game previews, breakdown, and analysis in, around, across, and beyond the Ateneo. And now, let's get ready to run down! This is your stop for all things pop. Catch our all-around pop culture geek, Chola Sediaren, as he throws in some dose of what's poppin' and what's hot in the pop culture scene here on Popcorn. Popcorn. Munch in with us every Thursdays from 4 to 6, only here on Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. The Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour. Jesuit Music Ministry, your daily dose of inspiration. Follow Jesscom PH on Spotify and Jesscom Music on YouTube. We are also on iTunes and Deezer. Let us understand mental health and explore how we can take care of our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Welcome to your weekly slice of mental health tips and tidbits with Pat and B here on Mind Ed. Sa'yo sumisilo Kapag ang puso ko'y pagod Radyo Katipunan 87.9 FM This is your stop for all things pop Catch our all-around pop culture geek Chola Sediaren as he throws in some dose of what's poppin' and what's hot in the pop culture scene here on Popcorn. Popcorn. Munch in with us every Thursdays from 4 to 6, only here on Radyo Katipunan 87.9 FM. Radyo! 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 Tara simula ng inyong umaga sa mga magagandang refleksyon tungkol sa ating buhay at pananampalataya. Kasama si na Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle ng Manila, Father J. Boy Gonzales at Father Nono Alfonso ng Kapisana ni Jesus, Father Cali Llamado ng Manila Cathedral, at binibining Risa Singson Kaupeng ng Light of Jesus Community dito sa Kapit Pandasal sa Radyo Katipunan 87.9 FM. Unawain ang kapwa. Magandang araw po sa inyo, kape at pandasal na po. Ito po si Cardinal Chito Tagle. Gusto naman nating unawain ang ating kapwa. Alam kong pinagsisikapan natin ito. Kaya lang dumarating ang oras na parang nagsasawa ka ng umunawa. Pakiramdam mo'y sinasamantala ka na, sinasamantala na ang kabutihan mo. Kaya nagdedesisyon ng iba na ihinto na ang pag-unawa. Oras ng maging malupit. Paano pa kaya 
mapapahaba ang pag-unawa. Subukan mong isipin kung ilang beses kang inunawa ng Diyos. Hindi maubos-ubos ang kanyang pasyensya. Hindi siya naiinip sa paghihintay sa atin. Siguro kapag nakita natin kung gaano tayo inunawa ng Diyos, baka makuha pa nating unawain ang kapwang katulad nating makasalanan. O Diyos, huwag nawa kaming magsawang magpatawad sa kapwa. Amen. The Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour. Good morning mga Katipuneros! Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our show here at Radyo Katipunan 87.9 FM. This is the Jesuit Hour and I'm your host, Father Nono Alfonso as SJ. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. It's a Tuesday. It's uh, March 9, 2021. Kumusta po kayong lahat? Tuesday. Okay, so bago po ang lahat, let's begin with our prayer. In the, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, my light, and illumine my darkness. Come, my life, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of thy love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, Son of earth shall be world without an Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so good morning po ulit sa inyong lahat, mga katiponeros. And uh, before we proceed with our conversation, spiritual conversation at the Jesuit Hour this morning, uh, just a few announcements lamang po. Uh, if you've been following us here at Radio Katipunan, of course, you are updated about the uh, wake masses concerning our beloved Father Joaquin Bernas who passed away ano po, last week. So, ano po yan? Medyo mahaba-haba. So, uh, we've been uh, waking him. Uh, ngayon po, nandun siya sa Arupe International Residence. So, he's uh, kumbaga making the rounds at the various residences, Jesuit residences here at the campus. Ayan. Uh, but uh, on Thursday, Uh, he will be waked uh, at the, the uh, Rockwell, yan, at Rockwell, the Ateneo Law School uh, Chapel, yon. So, and of course, he will be, uh, the presider of that wake mass will be Father J.R. Orbeta. 
na guest lang naman natin ngayong umagang ito. Iyan naman. <laughs> Because he is the chaplain of the Ateneo Law School and the uh, graduate ano, uh, school of business there as well. And then the funeral mass is on Monday at uh, 8.30 a.m. and it will be streamed live from the uh, Loyola School, uh, Loyola House of Studies rather, here at the Ateneo. So, mapapanood niyo po yan, yung uh, funeral mass dito po sa Radyo Katipunan. Of course, we uh, this is our way of uh, paying tribute to a great uh, Atenean and of course a great gesture to serve the Ateneo very, very well. No? So he was, I was told he was the first Filipino dean Uh, of the Ateneo, no? uh, si Father Joaquin Bernas po. And then he was also president. Uh, of course, he was provincial of the uh, Jesuits in the Philippines, but he was president of the Ateneo de Manila University as well as dean of the Ateneo Law School. Uh, so, sa f- lunes po, sama-sama tayo. Let's uh, kumbaga, bid him goodbye. So that will be streamed live here at Radio Katipunan the funeral mass of Father Joaquin Bernas. So we are giving you permission. We have our regular mass po uh, sa Radyo Katipunan at uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, it will be on a different page, pero Radyo Katipunan pa rin po. No? Uh, regular mass. So yun po yung maikli lamang. <laughs> But uh, the funeral mass will also happen and will be live streamed at Radyo Katipunan on a different page. 8.30 a.m. Monday, yeah. March 15, 2021. And the presider uh, is no less than Father Ben Nevres, Bienvenido Nevres of the Society of Jesus. Okay, so yan po, ano, sa mga nagtatanong, maraming po kasi nagtatanong, maraming nagmamahal kay Father Joaquin Bernas, a great uh, loss for, not just for us Jesuits, but of course for the Philippine nation. He served uh, our country as a legal luminary, no, uh, amicus curiae of uh, the Supreme Court many, many times. Uh, so we give him uh, our prayers and we bid him goodbye on Monday. So moving on, my dear friends, uh, today, uh, ano na po, ano? malapit na ang uh, Holy Week, but we're still in the heat kumbaga, of the Lenten season. At marami pong nagtatanong siyempre, no? Uh, and para lang makatulong din sa atin to uh, feel the spirit of this holiest of season in our church, we have invited, of course, our expert. Ayan, expert, uh, our liturgist. Yan, ano? uh, he, of course, uh, graduated from the uh, Catholic University of the U.S. of A. He is now the chaplain of the uh, law school, Ateneo Law School and Graduate School of Business at Rockwell. And uh, kulang, ano, sorry, kulang. Meron pa pala yung medical, <laughs> medical ano, city, ano, under him pa rin. So my dear friends, uh, to clarify all of that, uh, please welcome on our show once again, Father Ruben or Beta Jr. of the Society of Jesus to Friends, Father JR. Good morning, Father JR. Good morning, Father Nono, and good morning to all our viewers, listeners, uh, via Radio Katipunan, uh, social media accounts and platforms. Tama po yun, no? uh, kulang po kasi I'm the chaplain of the professional schools, and the professional schools is composed of four schools. No? The one in Rockwell, the law school and the graduate school of business, the one in Ortigas, the school of medicine and public health, And the one here in Loyola Campus, the okay. School of Government. So, four schools po yan. <laughs> so, that's why very busy po itong kaibigan natin. Para. Uh, <laughs> And Father Nono, just to clarify also, uh, mm-hmm. Father Bernas will be brought, the, the urn of Father Bernas will be brought to Rockwell on Thursday, Thursday. But it has been decided by the administration of the law school in consultation with central administration that uh, it will be a very private affair, no? given the surging cases of yes. infection. But the mass at 3 o'clock in the afternoon will be live streamed to uh, various social media accounts of the law school and of the university. So yun lang po. So parang just to clarify na 
uh, we are not opening Rockwell uh, for uh, outsiders to come because uh, given the, the very fluid situation of the COVID-19 infections, uh, just to be very prudent, uh, it will be a private up there. So live stream the man po. Uh -uh. So thank you. And and what time will that will that be, uh, Father Jr? The mass will be live streamed at three in the afternoon so three on in March eleven. Okay, so we will be sure to hook up with you and also that it can be aired sa Radio Katipunan. Okay, thank you for the clarifications, Father uh, Jr. Okay, so yes, Father Jr. Uh, how how are your preparations, of course, for uh, the Lenten season and of course for the fast approaching Holy Week? Yes, I think it's this year, or actually the second year, that uh, Holy Week and the Lenten season is not as busy as compared when I was in uh, Santa Maria in Iloilo. Because uh, before the pandemic, we had a lot of activities no, for the Lenten season and for Holy Week. But for last year and this year, it will be less no, because uh, Rockwell will still be closed. Uh, we will not have uh, uh, the liturgy for the Sacred Tree Doom. But we will cross post no, from Radio Katipunan uh, the liturgies to be celebrated in the Church of the Jesus. So, in a sense, not as busy as before, but busy just the same no, with all the other things that are expected. No? Yes. Uh, recollections, uh, also, po yun, no? recollections, retreats during uh, the Lenten season as well. Yes, po. so in fact, for us in Rockwell, uh, we used to have uh, the Tree to Home retreat no? uh, to be given by various uh, speakers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But for last year, we didn't have any. But for this year, <coughs> we'll only have one because there are many online retreats and recollections during the Sacred Tree to Home days. So we only offer one. No? That's on Holy Saturday via our Facebook uh, account, no? uh, APSCMO. Uh, it will be guided by our campus minister and pastoral counselor, uh, Sister Susay Valdez no, of the Religious of the Senate. So we will be uh, having that at 10 in the morning on Holy Saturday, April 3, via Facebook. So anyone can join via yes, Facebook. Oh. Very good. Okay. So, um, Father uh, JR, of course, we would like to deepen our understanding and appreciation of the Lenten season. And you are the expert to guide us in able to achieve that. So, uh, Father Jer, of course, the question is, uh, people know that uh, Lent begins uh, on Ash Wednesday. Uh, and, of course, it's marked by the uh, uh, ashes placed on our ano po, ano, sa ating mga noo. Pero ngayon, of course, uh, it was just sprinkled over our, our heads. Pero yung tanong po, Father, no? aside from that, of course, is there a uh, kumaga, a marked uh, difference in the readings? Uh, kasi hindi na halata ng mga tao na, oy nag-iba na, no? Iba na yung mga readings sa mga misa uh, from the time we start Lent. Yes po. Uh, with the revision of the lectionary uh, at Mass uh, brought about by the Second Vatican Council, uh, our present lectionary system follows People buy three, cyc uh, three cycles per Sunday and two cycles per the weekday. And the principle behind the choosing of the readings for the ordinary time is mm -hmm. continuous reading. So kung manunotice nyo po, the readings that we have for the ordinary time is continuous. We begin from, the, say for example, we read from the book of Genesis. And then what's, that's one pericope after another pericope after another pericope connected to yan. And the gospel reading, the same. No, uh, We begin with the gospel. Uh, uh, gospel mark and then uh, one pericope after another pericope after another pericope so continuous reading po. but if you if you look at it on a homilist perspective it's quite difficult to preach on a weekday no ordinary weekday big ordinary time rather because the readings are not really connected because you have a continuous reading for the first reading uh, old testament or a new testament uh, book and a continuous reading of the gospel so that's the the principle behind the lectionary system. But for Advent and Lent, and let's speak specifically for Lent, it's different. Mm -hmm. So you see we read from one book and then tomorrow we read from another book and then the following day we read from another book. 
we read from one gospel and then we read from another gospel. So mm. Lent then readings are now more thematic. Kung baga. It does not really follow the the continuous reading uh, cycle or paradigm no, that we adapted for the ordinary time. And rightly so, because the readings of Lent really invite us to delve deeper into the spirit and the essence of the holy season of Lent. Mm-hmm. Uh, so aside from the theme, uh, Father JR, is there a kumbaga design uh, behind the uh, arrangement of the readings? Kasi sabi nyo parang, parang haphazard, ano, parang uh, one uh, book of the, God, of the Bible to another unlike in ordinary time. Yes, po. If you examine the readings of the weeks of Lent, starting from Ash Wednesday up to now, the readings really speak about the call to conversion. So if you ask me personally, mm-hmm. what book would somehow encapsulate the entire season of Lent is really the first reading that we heard proclaimed on Ash Wednesday, the second chapter of the book of the prophet Joel. Iba, the prophet Joel spoke in the name of the Lord. He said to Israel, come back to me. Meaning to say, return to me. Be, be restored, be reconciled. Come back to me. And Jesus, uh, sorry, God rather to the prophet Joel also spoke, how can you come back to me? Rend your hearts, not your, not your garments. So it's really a call for inner conversion, a call for transformation that is not skin deep, but a transformation that begins from the core and manifests slowly through the externals. So really, if you ask me what the season of Lent is for, as I have said in my homily on Ash Wednesday, it's really going back to who we are. To be truly converted is really to be who we are are as called by God, his sons and daughters, redeemed by Christ, made temples of the Holy Spirit, and therefore boils down to our baptismal dignity and consecration. And so Lent and the season of Lent and the readings, in fact, would point out to this, a call always to conversion, a call always to transformation, but not a conversion and transformation that is brought about solely by one's understanding that I have fallen short, I have been sinful, I have been hard-headed and hard-hearted, but a call of conversion, yes, for the realization that one needs to change one's ways, but always against the very big backdrop of God's invitation, come back to me, of God's uh, limitless, infinite offer of salvation and restoration. So that for me encapsulates the whole essence of the readings for the liturgy of men. Always an invitation to come, to, to come back to the Lord. Parang si uh, uh, the great father Henry Nguyen, uh, para sa kanya, it's really return. The, uh, the key word for Lent and the key theme is returning home. Uh, diba? He wrote this book about the prodigal son. Uh, so return is the theme. Father uh, J.R., ano, uh, para lang po sa kaalaman ng marami, no? More or less, when was this uh, decided by the church yung uh, pag, uh, a partition sa ating calendar into these various seasons? Uh, mga kailan yan na, na, ano po, na finalize? Ano? <laughs> Why do we have uh, these seasons? Uh, so, yeah. Lent and then uh, Holy Week, Easter, Ordinary Time, Advent, Christmas. Yes, yes. So, if we examine the very uh, legendary work of a respected liturgical theologian and a liturgical historian at that, uh, Thomas Talley, his book, The Liturgical Year, really has three sections. No? He says the development of the liturgical year in its germ can be divided into three sections. First, from Sunday, the Lord's Day, to Pascha, meaning to say, the core of the liturgical celebration of the church really was Sunday, the Lord's Day. Everything revolves around the Lord's Day, and truly so, because the Lord's Day is the day of the Lord's resurrection, ultimate defeat over sin and evil and death. But in the course of history, parang na-extend backward, no? 
we focus on the Lord's Day for, from Sunday to Pasca. All right? Meaning to say from Sunday to the great festivities of the Tree to Om, if we have it right now, no? Uh, the ultimate celebration of the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. So offshoot shot from Sunday. Kaya nga, sabi ng liturgical theologians, it's not, really, it's not really accurate to say Sunday as a little Easter. Rather, it's more accurate and liturgically, theologically sound to say Easter is a great Sunday. So the Sunday has always been the core. And therefore, that core has been developed, focusing more on the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. Na parang, in a manner of speaking, for the lack of a better analogy, parang a more focused, more, more magnified sense of what we celebrate every Sunday. And then from Pascha to Parousia. Mm-hmm. And therefore, in the later development of the liturgical calendar, Pumasok na dun yung season of Advent, pumasok na dun yung season of Christmas. But remember, Pascha to Parousia because in the earlier source, sources, Advent and Christmas was always looked at with the lens of Parousia. With the lens of Parousia. It's always Christ coming because he will come again. That's why in the Advent, in the, in the norms for the season of Advent, if Advent is twofold to prepare for Christ's second coming, and in doing so, to commemorate Christ's first coming, the, the mystery of the Incarnation. So parang yun yung, ano, yun yung movement ng... Ano, it really all started with the celebration of the Lord's Day, the central mystery of our Christian faith, as St. Paul would say in his letters, the resurrection of Christ, Christ rising from the dead. And so from Sunday to Pascha, Pascha to Parousia. So parang, parang ganun yung progression. In a nutshell, that's how uh, Thomas Tali explained the liturgical year. Mm-hmm. Pero ano, um, Father JR, ano, hindi na ba kaya yan madadagdagan? Like, bigla na lang, dinagdag yung luminous mystery. Uh, <laughs> sanay na sanay na yung tao dun sa tatlo, biglang may luminous mystery. <laughs> I don't think so. In fact, there are some sectors who are uh, advocating for ano nga yung mystery na... So, Season sort of creation or something, something like that. Oh. Yeah. Parang, uh, the liturgical calendar kasi celebrates milestones, if you may, of Christ's mystery and therefore milestones of our Christian faith. No, We begin always with Advent. No, Advent prepares us for the ultimate second coming of Christ. Uh, in fact, I would say our whole Christian existence is really a spirituality of Advent. We are here because we await Christ's coming. And I have said in my recollection for Advent uh, uh, for the professional schools, if there's one prayer that really expresses Advent and the whole of Christian life is Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. No, So that's the, 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 the mystery that we celebrate, the mystery of the incarnation. And hopefully looking forward to the parousia, no? the ultimate second coming of Christ. Now Lent and Easter celebrates the Paschal mystery. Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. And when we extend to ascension, to Pentecost, Christ's glorification. So that's the seasons of Lent and Easter. The rest, the ordinary time, it's not ordinary sense na hindi siya importante. It's ordinary because it creates order in a sense. Because the, uh, as the general uh, norms for the liturgical year and the calendar stipulates, the ordinary time or the ordinary season does not specify or does not celebrate a particular mystery of Christ, unlike Advent, East, uh, Advent Christmas, Lent, Easter. But the whole mystery of Christ. Kaya nga yung whole season of creation, yung parang parang ganon. But for me, uh, m- many people may not agree with me, but really to establish a separate season for that uh, is uncalled for. Because what, yes, because whatever they espouse for that particular season is already enshrined as the liturgical norm state, no? the whole mystery of Christ in the ordinary season. Okay. Mabuti yan para hindi na uh, madagdagan pa, malilito ang mga tao. Okay. <laughs> But is it true uh, also, uh, Father JR, that 
in the early church, they were, I, I always like a, a historical perspective. In the early church, the Lent was a sort of a uh, preparation for uh, those who will be baptized, uh, who will become new members of the church, uh, accepted as new members of the church. The baptism, of course, will be done on Easter Sunday, but the whole of Lent is uh, spent uh, in preparing for them. Is that correct? Uh, we have to nuance that, no? Because as uh, Professor Russo, Dr. Russo, uh, uh, a doctoral uh, uh, a student of the University of Notre Dame who wrote a doctoral dissertation on the origins of Lent, and I was lucky enough because Dr. Russo was a contemporary of my professor. And so he invited Dr. Russo to talk to us about his dissertation, no? The Origins of Lent. He says, we have to, we have to understand that our, under, that our perception now of Lent is always connected to Pascha. Mm -hmm. Lent is always connected to Holy Week, always connected to Easter. But that was not really the case as Lent per Lent. Lent quadragesima as a period of 40 days or as a period of three weeks. Because... Uh, the standard theory uh, of the development of Lent is that it was a result of a gradual prolongation of the ancient one or two day pre Paschal fasts. Meaning to say, before Pascha, people fast one or two days, but eventually, pre nolong. Gawin na 40 days, parang ganon yung peg, no? So, yun yung traditional uh, standard theory of understanding the germination of Lent. But so, Dr. Russo, even most of it, Father JR, the objective was for people to fast longer. Ano yun? They were concerned about their diet, their. Uh... Not really. <laughs> kasi ma maganda yung perspective. Sabi kasi ng professor ko on liturgical calendar. He's a, he's a Greek Orthodox priest. Okay. And by that, uh, it's, I hope it doesn't sound pejorative or triumphalistic, but he's really Orthodox, meaning he is not in communion with Rome. No? Yeah. So you can you can really understand his perspective, no? Sabi niya, for us in the Orthodox Byzantine tradition, our liturgical year really is a cycle of fasts and feasts. We fast and then we feast. Mm -hmm. After feasting, we fast again and then we feast. Sabi niya, for you in the Roman Church, it's not very apparent because you only fast two days: Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But for them, there's really a, parang, the perspective that he was bringing uh, to the table is that there is a reason for their fasting because it's a longing, it's a preparation for a big feast. Diba? Like uh, many of our confreres, no? if there's an invitation to go to a buffet uh, for dinner, they won't take breakfast and lunch. <laughs> Well, I know. They can splurge, right? So that they can splurge uh, at the dinner buffet, no? Parang ganun. So parang ganun, for a lack of a better analogy, parang ganun yung ano niya. We fast because we look forward to something worth feasting. And then we feast. But feasting is not forever. Diba? There's an end to feasting, so we go back to fast again. Parang ganun. So, so parang ganun yung ano niya. Okay, so you're saying that according to Dr. Russo, uh, Lent as it was... Uh, umbaga developed uh, before uh, was a period of fasting. Yes. So that's, he, he said, he pointed out in his dissertation, that's the standard theory, standard scholarship and understanding uh, of the germination of land. No? It's a prolongation of the ancient one or two day pre-Pascal fasts. But Dr. Russo in the same dissertation says, there are actually alternatives that would help us understand the germination of Lent as Lent, huh? as quadragesima, as a period of 40 days. And he says many of these are not related to Pascha. Wow. That's where baptismal, that's where baptismal uh, preparation enters. Remember, it's the Roman church that baptizes on Easter Vigil. Mm -hmm. Our Orthodox brethren does not only baptize on Easter Vigil, in fact, one of the sources that he called from in explaining the origins of Lent is of Coptic provenance, no? an, an, an Egyptian origin. And it's really a uh, uh, post-Epiphany fast that was transferred and joined to Holy Week. So, so 
So parang 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 ganun. So Egypt originally observed a fast of 40 days following Epiphany in imitation of Christ's fast in the wilderness. Okay? So so parang ganun. Uh, what what we're trying to say is Lent as a period really as a preparation for baptismal celebration or the for the reception of sacraments of initiation may not necessarily be connected to uh, Pascha because uh, some of our some ancient Christian communities would do baptism not during Pascha but after uh, meaning during the season of Epiphany no or during the season of, of the Lord's baptism mga, mga ganun. so parang Yun yeah. na, parang very interesting that uh, Dr. Russo said at the end of our one hour and a half session with him. So what's really the origin of our land? We do not know. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, uh, so, uh, so, it makes a lot of sense Father JR, kasi nga, kung maghihintay ka pa ng, ano, diba? maghihintay ka pa ng uh, Holy Week or Easter Vigil, sabi mo nga, para mabinyagan, di ba, parang... Uh, Kawawa naman yung mga, ano, di ba? Uh, kukotya, mabibinyagan mo niya kung hintay ka nang hintay lagi, no? So, mm-hmm. ba't sinasabi mo nga, sa iba, they, they baptize during Epiphany, uh, Sunday, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so, but uh, when I was in theology, I remember that, that uh, ayun yung standard explanation na uh, Lent was in preparation for the baptism that happens uh, during Easter Vigil or Easter Sunday. So, yes, yes, po. Mm-hmm. but not oh. necessarily. But yeah, as pointed out, it might it's a baptismal preparation, but not at all times as called from various sources uh, oh. connected to Pascha. In the Roman Church, definitely it is. Grab- but we must remember. Uh, but we must remember also that during this time, before the fourth century, before the Edict of Milan in three thirteen, baptisms really were uh, adult baptism. Adult. No? Uh, yeah. Kasi, di ba, uh, ano pa yung simbahan nun eh? Uh, outlawed pa, di ba? Uh, period of, of, of persecution. But in the liturgy and theology of baptism, we can see that no in the development. After the Edict of Milan, 4th century, dahan-dahan ang nawawala no? yung adult baptism. Kasi mga bata na. Kasi you are now all legal as Christians. Yes, yes. You are now the imperial religion. So, parang may 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 change na ganun. and and it's a complex <laughs> complex yeah. web of things. But uh, it's interesting to study those. Ano. Pero uh, now that you mention it, ano, y- yung isang theory about the origin of land. It's so ano, amazing that there there is great uh, import uh, importance is placed on fasting, ano, in the life of the church. Ang galing galing naman. Ano. Kasi nga tama ka. Ngayon hindi na masadong ano eh, Ash Wednesday lang and Good Friday. But in the early church, it was really a practice, you know, an important practice, part of the uh, of the faith. Galingan mo? Siguro ang papayat nila noon. Katulad Siguro. Hindi <laughs> naman. Kasi, kasi sabi naman ng aking professor, uh, for them, when they fast during the season of Lent, it's not naman that they don't eat anything. Uh-huh. It is that they only eat bread and water. When they fast, they only eat bread and water, which is very, very rooted in tradition. Because uh, of the of the church order documents that I have read, no, in preparation for comprehensive exams, parang palaging parang may dala or tatlong documents would specify that for fasting, no, uh, bread and water, <laughs> parang, parang, parang ganun. So okay. you abstain from from feast. So what did he say? Uh, I wonder what did he say? See, Doctor Russo. Or, or your professor, or your other sources. What did Vatican do uh, add to this, to the development, evolution of uh, our practice now of the Lenten season? Mm, sige. I mentioned that in the fifth century, mm. with, the absence of, with the absence already of persecution and the Christian faith already is acceptable and lawful, uh, the catechumenate and adult baptism waned down mm. to the point na, na siya because it was replaced by 
infant baptism. All right. So when you baptize infants, you don't really need a catechumenal program because these infants are infant. No, paano mo sa ikakatikis? And so one of the ancient, if you if you study the ancient Roman lectionaries, one of the uh, there are three readings that are very central to the season of Lent. Three Sundays of Lent, the Gospel of Saint John, chapter four, on the discourse on the water between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, John chapter 9, the healing of the man born blind, and John chapter 11, the raising of Lazarus. And in the catechumenal process, these three readings are very central in the catechesis of the catechumens. And these readings are used on three Sundays before Pascha, before Easter. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, after the 5th century, Kasi nga wala nang catechumenate, no? uh, you don't really need parang ganon. Uh, three lands for ang mga readings ito to various weekdays of Lent. Mm -hmm. What Vatican II did in the revision is bring them back to Sundays. But since our Sunday cycle is 3, A, B, C, these re readings from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, chapter 9, chapter 11, are what we read for cycle A. For cycle B and cycle C, we have separate readings. So what did Vatican II bring back? The tradition of these catechumenal preparations. That's why the celebration of the three scrutinies, the celebration of the handing of the creed, the celebration of the handing of the Our Father, and the giving back of the creed, and the giving back of the Our Father. I know for us in the Philippines, these sound strange, these sound uh, new, these sound uh, unheard of, because the catechumenate in the Philippines is not really practiced. Because infant baptism tayo lahat dito eh. yeah. But for our brothers and sisters in the West, uh, in the United States, uh, the the rite of Christian initiation for adults is uh, very active. So para ito yung binalik ng, ng ng Second Vatican Council in the revision of the liturgical calendar. What about uh, yung sa part naman po ng pare, no? uh, yung sacramentary, ano? uh, when the priest uh, presides at Mass, nagkakaroon siya ng ibang mga prayers na during Lent, di ba? Mm -hmm. That's right. One of the things that the new Roman Missal, by new I mean the 2011-2010 edition no? mm -hmm. under Benedict XVI, one of those that they restored to the Roman Missal was what we call the Oratio Super Populum, or the prayer over the people. Roman practice, it is Roman practice to bless the people with prayer. So the final blessing at Mass is actually a prayer. Kaya sabi ng professor ko, you know what, in the Roman way, to consecrate a church, the Roman pontiff just goes to the new church and celebrates the Eucharist with the congregation, with the community. And after that, that's it. The church is consecrated, the altar is blessed. But in the present dispensation, we have rites of, you know, anointing the walls. We have rites yeah. of incensing, yeah. anointing the altar. Sabi niya, those are not really innately Roman because what is Roman is really very simple, <laughs> very basic. These are Gallican uh, parang na, 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 na inculcate na lang sa Roman system but from outside mm -hmm. so uh, so the Roman way of blessing people is through prayer and that is what we we uh, bring back or what was brought back in the new uh, Roman Missal and if you also look at the the prayers of the the Roman Missal for the season of Lent it's really asking the Lord that the faithful, all of us, will truly be immersed in the practice of the discipline of Lent. The discipline of fasting, the discipline of prayer, and the discipline of almsgiving. Mm -hmm. It's always asking the Lord to be merciful upon us, that we'll be able to enter into these disciplines and be transformed. It always asks that, Lord, as we have received the sacred mysteries, may they transform us. May the sacred mysteries have an effect and impact in our lives. May it bring change, may it bring reconciliation, etc. So that's really the, the, the core or the essence, if you may, no, of the uh, ecological texts for the season of, of Lent. 
Okay, bago lang tayo magpatuloy, uh, Father Jer, ano, may mga nakikinig sa atin, batiin daw po natin, nanonood sa atin ngayon, si Father Ro Atilano. Yeah. <laughs> nanonood po siya ngayon. Uh, and of course, Cesar Ordonez. Uh, si Karen Shi, uh, sabi niya, Father Bernie was the president when I entered college. He was a rock star yet very accessible. We also greet Virginia Nicolas, Nenita Leonardo, and Nora San Pablo Bordeos. Oh, maraming gusto matuto ano kung uh, uh, paano nga nagawa yung uh, Lenten liturgies. Okay, so Father Jera, no, grabe yung emphasis sa uh, uh, yung sinasabi mong three disciplines ano, uh, fasting, prayer, and uh, ano po, alms giving ano. Is there, can you point uh, to a period of, of uh, in the history of the church na nagsimula ito or uh, na tatlo, yung tatlong yun, the three pillars of uh, the Lenten season, uh, pinagsama-sama? Kung saan at kanino nagsimula? Kay Jesus. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> In the Gospel of St. Matthew that we heard proclaimed on Ash Wednesday, those are three things that Jesus mentioned precisely. When you fast, when you pray, when you give alms. Yes, yes. Diba? Those are the three disciplines that Jesus himself said in the Gospel of St. Matthew. But as I have said, uh, the Christian dispensation really was born no? from, from the Jewish dispensation. If you may, given our way or even our calendar of prayer, our times of prayer, the liturgy of the hours, no, we pray at six, at nine, at twelve, at three, at six, at midnight, at dawn. All those are really called from 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 Jewish times. No? That's why in the Acts of the Apostles, diba? at three o'clock they were they were supposed to go to the temple to pray. So itong fasting naman, we also got from the Jewish tradition. But the difference is the Jews fast on Mondays and Thursdays. For the Christians to be differentiated, we fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. Oh, and, yeah. and I think the Wednesdays and Fridays are somehow connected to the passion of Jesus. It was Wednesday that Jesus was uh, betrayed by, by uh, Judas when he was looking for opportunities to betray Jesus. And Friday, of course, is the day of the Passion. So it has always been there. Mm-hmm. So, kanino at saan nagsimula? Always uh, with Jesus. Kasi oh. almsgiving is, has always been there. In fact, one of the oldest, if not the oldest church order document, the Didache, uh, around 90 AD, it explains that in the liturgical assembly, even uh, Justin Martyr mentions this in his uh, works, no? Just in Martyr, around 150, 160. That in the liturgical assembly, they collect. May collecta. So as early as the as the first, our predecessors, may collecta na. So hindi bago yung sibot na yan. No? Matagal na yan. No? <laughs> there is collecta. Oo. There is collecta. May mga mana. No? Nakabronda pa siguro. Nakabel. <laughs> No, no? So meron sa mga predecessors so, sa panahon pa ng Didake sa panahon pa ng uh, Justin ma- Martyr. Ma- oh, oh. Pero Justin Martyr explicitly say that the collection is made for the needy and the poor. For the needy and the poor. Kahit so, ba- diba? so when, you, when you come to think of it, saan ba you do unto me? When you feed, when you give drink, when you clothe, when you visit, when you console, when you comfort, any of these least ones, you do them to me. So it's really part and parcel of Christian discipline. But ano lang sa atin kasi it has been, our impression is it has been focused on, it has been impressed upon by the season of Lent. But actually, no. The discipline of fasting, the discipline of prayer, the discipline of almsgiving must permeate a Christian's okay. life all year round. That's a very good point, ano, uh, Father Jer. Kasi nga, naalala lang yan pag Lenten season na eh. Yes, yes. So, and I think, uh, kaya nga parang, kaya nga parang as, a, as, as a preacher and a pastor myself, no, we have to nuance it. Eh. Kasi if we say, We are now in the season of Lent. We are 
call to fast, pray. No. Para, ibig sabihin nun, sa Lent lang tayo mag-fast, mag-pray yes. at mag giving, di ba? Yes. But maybe a better way of saying it is we are already in the season of Lent when we are called to deepen, yeah. deepen the call to fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. So that means to say, pag sinaradating ng taong deepen to call, ay, dapat pala araw-araw tayo mag, ano, sa, sa Lent lang tayo nag- Parang, parang, parang pinapamukha sa atin na, uy, nandito ito ha, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Parang, parang ganun. So, so pag Lent, uh, you say deepen uh, the discipline. So, magbigay ng mas marami. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Pwede okay. rin po. Father Jeremy, tanong lang po dito. No? I hope you can answer this. Um, I have a question, sabi niya, baka pwede pong uh, masagot, is the practice of covering images during the fifth Sunday of Lent a mandated practice or is it uh, uh, in the rubrics? The rubrics still contain it, still still provide for it. That, uh, yun din, why are we covering them? No? Is it because Semana Santa na, ikakover na natin sila? This is the beauty of liturgy, eh, di ba? Kasi Sacro Santum Concilium always impresses upon the beauty of the celebration as represented, as manifested in signs and symbols perceptible to the senses. Mm-hmm. So whatever we use in sacred liturgy, whatever we do in sacred liturgy, is not just there for our celebrandi. It's not just there for the art of celebration, but it is a theological liturgical statement. And the basic theological liturgical statement of covering those, th- those statues or even the crucifix is a deeper longing for God. Para ma-miss natin. Parang ganon, no? uh, for a lack of a better analogy, parang ganon. Parang it instills in the human heart because we are sensible, percepting persons. Yeah. So we really need something to see, something to hear, something to smell to aid our spiritual life. No? Parang ganon. Uh, Hindi parang ganun, ganun talaga <laughs> to aid our spiritual life. So the practice of covering when you go to church, I, I no longer, I can no longer behold the face of Christ on the cross. And therefore that inability to behold should foster in our hearts a deeper longing to be in communion with God. And I think, parang it, yeah, magandang point yan, ano, uh, Father Jair, and I hope, satisfied yung nagtanong uh, sa atin. Uh, that's a very good point kasi especially in the Philippines uh, which is uh, predominantly uh, a Catholic country, di ba? Uh, parang yung tao minsan hindi na namimiss Jesus. But I had a friend who was uh, assigned, he was he, he's a doctor and he was assigned uh, at one point sa Japan at naghahanap siya ng, ano, ng Catholic Mass. Doon niya naranasan daw na uh, what we take for granted here in the Philippines, yung mga misa na available oras-oras, araw-araw dito, doon sa Japan, it's not uh, like that. Ano? So na-miss niya talaga yung Catholic Mass, the Holy Eucharist. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, di ba, and because of that longing, sabi mo nga, mas na-appreciate niya ngayon yung kanyang pananampalataya. Now he's based in London and this siya pa nag-aalok sa akin, nangungulit sa akin na, oh, Father Nono, join our rosary. Diba? <laughs> Zoom. Diba? Uh, but uh, sabi ko nga, that all started in Japan when he started longing for for home, which is the Eucharist. Ay, ang ganda nun, no? Okay, so may tanong. May dagdag ka, Father Jer. Uh, I think that's the, that's the lesson that we can really get from this pandemic. Just briefly, a story, no? When during the uh, and, uh, and a GCQ, na yun, GCQ na, I was able to go to the School of Medicine and Public Health for a week mass no? for one of our alumnus who died very suddenly. And during the mass, may tatlo, apat, ko lima na host na extra kasi I counted more. No? And then the last one who received Holy Communion was our associate dean. And so, kasi siya ang last, I gave all five to him. Mm-hmm. Tapos he texted me, you know what, Father? I just realized that was my first Mass after lockdown. Physical Mass, ha? Mm-hmm. And the first time I received communion after lockdown. And when you, uh, when I saw that you gave me five, but it's the Lord telling me, I know you're hungry for me. Mm-hmm. Now I am satiating your hunger. Parang dun niya na-realize na yung 
a deeper appreciation of the sacraments. I think that's the, what the pandemic has done to us. Galing, 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 galing. That's true. Okay, may tanong pa dito, uh, Father Jer, no? What about, uh, ito mga, again, I, I talked about uh, my appreciation of the historical background perspective of things, you know, of our practices. The way of the cross. Kaya naman nagsimula yan, ano? Tapos uh, nalilito sila, ngayon there's a... Uh, there's a new version. So can you just answer that, uh, Father Jay? All right. The new way of the cross promulgated by, promulgated by Pope John Paul II was really a revision that would somehow ground the stations to biblical texts. That's why all the stations that we have right now in the revised new way of the cross have, have scriptural basis and foundations. Mm -hmm. The old one, which we have been using since the Middle Ages, are actually called from experiences of going back into how Jesus suffered and endured his passion. And some of them, like the wiping of the face by Veronica, Jesus falling second, third times, we cannot really ground them in actual scriptural text but revered by tradition. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's an explanation why there is an old, why there's a new. Now, the old way of the cross was really developed by the Franciscan friars. Remember, the Franciscan friars were the custos. They were the custodians of the holy sites in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And Jerusalem and the Holy Land has really been a place of pilgrimage. Now, during the times of the Crusades, uh, where it's very, very unsafe for people to go to the Holy Land. In fact, Ignatius, our very founder himself, yeah, yeah. was expelled from the Holy Land, remember? The custos there told him, you have to go back. You're not safe here, right? And he was even uh, prod, prodded under obedience. Stay away. <laughs> go away from, because you're not safe here. And because of that possibility of people not being able to go to the holy sites related to the passion of Christ, the Franciscan priors developed these stations of the cross. In other words, they were bringing Jerusalem uh -huh. and the Holy Land to wherever yes. people are. If people cannot go to the holy sites, let the holy sites go to them, wow. come to them. So parang yun yung no, development natin ng, ng stations of the cross. Since we cannot do the Via Crucis, on the very steps where Jesus carried his cross, we can do it here, uh, contemplating on these very mysteries, these very stations, following Jesus on his way, on his way uh, to Calvary. Wow, ito talaga mga Franciscans na ito. <laughs> Pero Father JR, um, so you would recommend the new one, the new version. Is that correct? Actually, if you ask me, I don't know if people will agree with me, it doesn't really matter okay. whether you use the old or the new. In fact, I have uh, in my room uh, when we stayed in Georgetown, there was there a book that was already very dusty, you know? mm -hmm. very dusty. Wala nang bumabasa. So it's this, uh, The Way of the Cross uh, for the Unborn. So the themes of The Way of the Cross are based on uh, abortion. Uh -huh. And I found it very nice. But it is old because it's 1990. So I'm using it. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. What's important, really, the way of the cross. Mm -hmm. The way of the cross really is an invitation for us to journey with Jesus towards Calvary. And siguro to put it a theological statement, if I may, no, if I may, uh, the new way of the cross ends with the resurrection mm -hmm. because that's where the story really ended. The old way of the cross ends with Jesus being buried, being laid in the tomb, no? in the in sa tomb, no? parang ganun. Yeah. So parang uh, for me, uh, to answer the question, uh, personally, uh, it doesn't really matter whichever would help you accompany Jesus on his way to Calvary, whichever will develop further your capacity for loving Christ, the suffering Christ, no? Very uh, Ignatian, whichever helps, uh, yeah. do it. I'm not so certain though, maybe not, no? I, the old way of the cross has been totally abrogated. I haven't heard if it is Wala true. Naman. Wala naman, no? Wala. Parang, parang John Paul II just provided a yeah. more biblical, more scriptural 
uh, way of the cross. Pero, okay. uh, pero Father, tumawag yung Georgetown, hinahanap na raw nila yung booklet na yan. <laughs> I'll be very happy to go back and return it. <laughs> Awa. Ah, okay, Father. Uh, you, what about the Siete Palabras? That's also uh, diba, a uh, favorite uh, here in the Philippines. The Siete Palabras. Uh, kailan naman yan, what do you think? Kailan naman yan nauso? Alam mo, di ko masyadong kabisado yan. But I think it must have been developed during the Spanish times. Kasi di ba, uh, to instill in the faithful uh this journey in with Jesus no and reflecting on Jesus uh while he was on his way to the passion or while he was on his way no uh to the uh, to Calvary while he was hanging on the cross it's really an invitation of the faithful to to journey with Jesus to be with Jesus i'm not uh, i'm not a historian so baka si father mads tumbali can can answer can answer that on spanish time okay uh father jer and uh, Nananod sa atin si Nenita Leonardo. Sabi niya, thank you very much, Father JR, for the Lenten, uh, this Lenten uh, liturgy talk. Si Dan Alvarado, sabi niya, I remember an Irish priest telling us that when he was a kid, his family fast or abstained every Friday. Di ba totoo yun? Di, uh, uh, nagkaroon ako ng kaibigan na uh, Amerikano. Sa kanila raw, every Friday is fasting. Kaya pinapauso ngayon ni Father Anton Pascual sa... Ano eh, sa Uh, Radio Veritas, yung No Meat Friday, di ba? Kasi uh, sa atin, uh, yung abstinence is just uh, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But in other Catholic countries, this is observed, di ba? Actually, Every it's, Friday. Yeah. Actually, it's provided in the Code of Canon Law. I think Father Dakanay can explain it further. But the Code really specifies that all Fridays of the year, not just Fridays of Lent, are days of abstinence. Okay. Not necessarily fasting, but days of abstinence. Abstinence, yes. No meat Friday. Si Lisa, sabi niya, what's the symbolism of uh, the Easter candle uh, and the Latin prayer uh, said during uh, the vigil? Quickly lang, Father. The Easter candle really is the representation, is really the symbol of Christ, the light of the world. Okay. And I don't know what the Latin prayer, but if if the our sister prefer, uh, refers to Lumen Christi, the one that the priest chants or the deacon chants while processing with the with the Paschal candle. It's really a proclamation that Christ is our light. Uh, the light of Christ is here to dispel the darkness of sin, evil, and death. Or baka yung sinasabi yung symbol, yung Alpha Omega, di ba? Ah, it, it is really, uh, if we listen more to the text of the prayers, uh, consecrating, blessing the candle, it states uh, there that we ask you to bless this candle, no? A symbol of Christ who is the beginning, who is the end. Uh, all time belongs to Him, all seasons, etc. So last question the... lang. before we let you go, Father. Uh, last question. How do you count down? Nalilito siya, no? Sabi 40 days, parang hindi yata kakasya yung 40 days before Holy Week. Actually, kasya na with the addition of the three days. Kasi uh, there are three days before the first Sunday of Lent. So... The Sundays are not counted, right? The Sundays are not Uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, the Sundays, yes, because Sundays, the Lord's Day, even if it is uh, Lent, they are not in the tradition of the church uh, fasting days. So, okay. yes. Okay, so fast and feast. Maganda yung sinabi mo kanina. Siguro, final message, uh, Father JR, uh, how our, ano po, ano, our Catholic faithful can draw more uh, spiritual gain from the celebration during this Lent, the liturgies? Sige po. So very briefly, I think most people would come to me and ask me the question, what? What do I have to do in the season of Lent? What are required of me in the season of Lent? I think the invitation of Lent, dear sisters and brothers, is to go deeper. Instead of asking what, let's ask ourselves why. Why do we fast? Why do we pray? Why do we give alms? And hopefully that why will lead us always to the very big backdrop of this God who loves us, of this God who always invites us to come to him, who always offers us the hand of forgiveness and reconciliation. So Lent is not a season of what and doing, but a season of why 
the essence of doing things. Wow, ang ganda naman para kami ng recollection. Thank you so much, Father JR. As always, uh, salamat. Kaming salamat po. Yes, yeah, salamat sa mga paliwanag. Thank you and uh, more power to you. Yan po, si Father JR Orbeta, mga katipuneros, thank you so much. Uh, on Thursday, join us again. We will talk about uh, our prayers also during this Lenten season. Uh, there's a group po who came up with prayers during this Lenten season. And let's talk about how to pray this Lent. Okay, uh, pauna na si Father JR. May advice na siya sa atin. Ask the why, not the what. Okay, marami sa lahat po sa inyong lahat. This has been the Jesuit Hour. I'm your host, Father Nono Alfonso, SJ. Hanggang Thursday, marami sa lahat po sa inyong lahat. Bye-bye! The Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour.